Hey guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be breaking down one of the most important concepts in trading, supply and demand zones. Understanding these zones can be a game changer for your trading strategy. Now let's dive into it. First, we have to understand what supply and demand is. Supply is basically areas where sellers can come in. Think of it as resistance. Meaning that when we fall down to a level, we're likely to bounce, or if you go up to a certain area, we're likely to get a rejection. But establish these areas by most points of touches where reverses happened. So let's say we're on the four hour chart, I like to go out about six months. So we'll go from April to about you know October or so. We just get the chart in real tight. Okay, so end of October right here. So we're starting November all the way to April. So we got about six months here, and all we're gonna do is we're gonna get a horizontal line. And then we're going to take a look at where were the most touches where reverses happened, whether it's reverses for the downside or the upside. So this is personally how I mark out my levels and you could do this on any time frame. We're going to go on the four hour. We'll, we'll also look at the one hour. You can use a daily uh, you can use the weekly. Um, but I personally use like the daily four hour or one hour and then I'll basically do day trade I'll do day trades off of these levels. So I'll show you how to use these levels, but first let's establish how to set the supply and demand levels. So supply and demand on the four hour, as you can see, there was a lot of touches here. We hit resistance once, twice, three times, four times, and then uh, over here support, that's five touches. So basically we're gonna put one line here. It's a supply level if we rise up into it as a resistance, then we'd be looking to short off of that, or it's a demand level meaning that when it falls down to those levels, we're going to be longing it for a bounce. So these four hour levels, I'll mark out as red and we'll use different colors for the one hour. So on the four hour, that's, that's the first level. And typically, you know, four levels or so max, you don't really want to do all the levels. You want to do what's most relevant. <clears throat> so that was the far away. Another level you could say is right here, but not enough touches, right? Then you would say maybe uh, right here, Right here is another level, why? Because we have one touch, two touch, three touch, uh, four touch, five touch, and then uh, basically it's a little farther, but six, seven, and it got kind of eight. So you could say one level is here. And then the next level would be right here. This is a very important one. Uh, why? Because if you just mark right here, you see there's one touch. We came down, broke through, but then this is two touch. And then you see broke through. So three touch, four touch, almost five touch, but four touch, five touch, six touch, seven touch, eight touch, nine touch. So nine touches, which means that it is a very important level. And then uh, another level would be right here because one, two, three, four, five, six as support bounced, seven, this one, eight, it rejected and came out, then it broke through. And then you could say nine, 10, 10 touches, right? So last one would be at the highs here, right above. This would be the last level right there. Why? Because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, almost eight touches. So now, let me know in the comments down below, does that make sense, right? We drew these levels because then now when you zoom in, you can see that price respected those levels quite a bit. Look at this level right here. Touch, 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 right? So this is, is honestly right here, this is probably the most important level right here. So all this means that on the day, uh, if we do come down here and we show some buying, then it's likely a good area to go long. So what we do is we go down the five minute chart and we would take a look at, let's say yesterday, uh, the day before, you know, CPI came out, it fell straight to that level. And then I had a five minute bullish engulfing candle pulled back and then a higher low bullish engulfing candle close. And that's where you could even, you could take a long right there, stop below all the lows and have it as a, a one to one, right? You get 50, 58 points, 60 points, right? Solid, done for the day. So that's just one example of a demand zone. So let's just zoom back out though. Let's go on the one hour because we can also set one hour zones and daily, but then it gets too complicated. So 
if, if I were you, I would just you know choose between daily, four hour, and one hour. You can use two of any of those three. I like to use the four hour and the one hour. So now on the one hour, we're gonna do the same thing, but we're just gonna look in the last 30 days. And we're gonna see on the last 30 days, if there is any zone, so if April 11th, we wanna to go to about March 11th. That would be right here. All right, so right here, we wanna look where, where the most touch is, and we're gonna make this level gold. Uh, honestly, this same level that we have before level is exact, exact same, so we're not gonna do it again, but <clears throat> this is where I would put a one hour level. Another one hour level could be right here. Um, we'll mark it up because we have uh, a bounce here, a bounce here, we have a resistance here, a bounce, a bounce, a bounce, a bounce, and then resistance and resistance. So that is a good level. And then one more would be right here. So we have another level right here because we have a bounce, a bounce, a bounce, a bounce, a bounce. Um, kind of a bounce, but not really. Uh, a bounce and a bounce. So these are our levels and all it would do now is let's say we wanted to trade using these levels today. So this now we know now we know this is these are our supply and demand levels and they're only supply or demand levels based on where price currently is. So basically if it's above then it's a supply level. If it's below then it's a demand level. Meaning when we come down we, we would look for a bounce so now when we go back down to the five minute chart and we look today, we could say, okay, well, we would expect price to fall into some sort of resistance and have a rejection off of this level around 345. You know, it doesn't have to, but if it does, as in if we, like, as an example, if, <clears throat> if we had this kind of structure up here where we pushed up, we had a high, we sold off, then we had a lower high bearish engulfing, you know, we might take a short there, uh, and obviously after more confirmation, but that's just the beginning stage. Uh, you know, we broke above this supply level, and then it became a demand level when we fell to it, right? Same idea. When the news came out pre-market, spiked the demand level, bought up, broke one of our levels, and then pulled back down, and then it showed some buying, so you could get a long off of this demand level. If we go look at yesterday... Yesterday it was honestly a really choppy day. <laughs> you can see how choppy this is. But I mean, I didn't even have a trade yesterday. The only trade I actually had was an ES short. So this won't even work really. But you can still see that you know we we fell down to this demand level, our more a stronger one because it's a four hour. Uh, got bought up, hit the supply level, uh, got rejected a bunch, broke through briefly, uh, then pulled back down and, and basically just ping pong between these two levels. Right, so you can just see these levels be resected, and, and, and like it doesn't work all the time, obviously, but there's an edge there, and that's all you need as a trader. You just need the edge. So what I recommend is when you're trying to do supply and demand trading, and how I personally use it is I'll set up these daily four-hour, one-hour zones, and I'll use a five-minute chart, and then I'll use market structure to go off of those levels. You know, like I said, if we pull back to a demand level and we get a higher low bullish engulfing, I'll I'll probably take a long, right? right here we fall sell off and then we have this right here we we showed some consolidation boom big bear, bullish engulfing candle close above but you don't want to get on the first one you want confirmation of like a higher high so we get a push up we we pull back and then here's a higher low bullish engulfing you look at long this candle close there's a trade right there and you can see that actually goes from one level to the next that's the beauty about supply and demand you can fall down to a demand level and then the next target could be the next level and it, it, in this case, that's what happens. Scrolling back some more, you know, we're just we're just taking this day by day. So we're taking a look. So here's the market open 9:30. Uh, we traded up into this supply level. Found, you know, we just went sideways pre-market. Market opens, dumps. So basically, shows that it is a resistance. Uh, comes down, doesn't quite get to this one, uh, but then stops midway. Comes back and does a double top at the supply level. And actually, this is where I took a short on NASDAQ because it double topped at a supply level and then had the lower high bearish engulfing back down. So I did get in the trade <clears throat> below the EMAs. I kind of use them as a like a second layer of confluence if I want to. I just targeted the order block to the left on the five. And we'll go back and we'll just do one more day and then we'll do the same thing on ES. All right, so here's Friday. Friday, you could see uh, news came out 830, spiked the level. 
bought up, went back up to the next level, and then you know pre-market trades all the way down, market opens to the, the level again, gets bought up, uh, hits the level but breaks through, and then uses that same level as support and just spikes up to the next level. I mean, you know, we can't make these things up. I just, I just did these levels, supply and demand levels with you live, and you can see them working perfectly uh, just in the past week or so. Now we'll go over to ES and we'll try doing the exact same thing, but we'll use the daily levels and the one hour levels this time. So on the daily, we're just gonna go back and highlight one year. So you see, if we go from April 2024 to April of 2023, just scrunch this in a little bit. Here you can see, right there, all right. So now, all we're gonna do is mark out where were the most touches. So looking from left to right, you can see most touches. Um, you can obviously see, uh, and also, you, you can do most touches, but you don't wanna get a bunch of lines on your screen. You wanna do most recent, uh, like re most relevant touches. So the most, the oldest, most relevant touch I'll do is just the previous all-time high uh, that turned into support. So it was all-time high, broke above, turned into support, and then rocketed back up and just continued on. So once that happened, then we uh, pushed up and we want to look for where there were a lot of touches. Here is, you know, on ES, there, there's not a lot on the daily at least, right? So here's another level. Let me change these to um, a different color. So we'll make these daily ones purple. So we'll say the daily ones are purple. Actually, we'll do blue so it stands out more. The daily ones are blue. Here uh, would be another one. Again, you know, resistance, so one, support two, support three, support four. So, you know, typically you want at least four touches, right? You can get away with three touches if you don't really have a lot of zones. Like here was like three touches, was one, two, I mean, basically three touches. Uh, because this one breaks through, you don't want to count that. You want to count times there was a reversal. So at least three touches, uh, but obviously stronger ones are five or more. And then you'll see there's, there's some that you get like seven to ten touches. Those are your most important levels, clearly. So this one, uh, next one here would be right here. So you got one, two, three, four, I mean, technically five. And then next one is up here around this uh, resistance. Let me just go over and zoom in on here so we can see it better because we forgot about the past now. We're in just uncharted territory. So we wanna go off of these touches here. Okay, so we can see a lot of resistance and that was happening here, support and resistance, support and resistance. Yeah, so I'm basically gonna average it in and it's gonna come down to here. Why? Because one touch, two touch, um, this was a kind of like an area it fought between. Three touch, four touch, this is also a five touch. So that's why we have that level. Uh, or actually we can split this out. We can split this out actually better to make it here. So. One touch, two touch, three touch, four touch. These are a bunch of supports. And then here were a slew of resistances. Right here. So one, two, three. And right there. Okay, so these are our daily levels. You can see we touched one, two, three, four, and then uh, five, and then here we, we you can see we touched one, two, three, four, five, six. If you count today, so those are our daily levels, and then we'll just do one hour levels. We'll make those ones gold, and then we'll check out the trading and see what happens. So remember, one hour you want to go thirty days back. So you're gonna look at Friday, April twelfth to Monday, March twelfth, and you're just gonna look at how many touches there were. So this. Obviously, it was one, but that was a daily level. Here is one you could put. I'd rather put it here because it happened a lot here. And we'll go there. And another level you could put is back here. So these two levels. And then that one encapsulates that. And you could put another level right there. Yep. Yep, pretty good. Perfect. So now all we're going to do is go to the five minute chart and we'll look at the last two weeks and we'll see how the levels performed if you took trades based on the supply and demand. So today, uh, again, news opened up, spiked this so this demand level, broke through the supply level because remember supply levels are above. It means that 
it could be resistance, but it broke through, went straight to the next level, um, and then the market opened, and it had some weakness, and it fell straight back down here, broke below briefly, but then got back above. So then you could use this as a sign of, okay, you know, this is our, now our support. It turned into support. Why? Because, you know, it, it broke through briefly, but then got back above and went sideways. So honestly, it was going sideways and you got this bullish engulfing. This could be your confirmation to get in long and you could long this, take it back up to the level. Worked perfectly on ES today. Uh, yesterday was the CPI day, right? It was a terribly choppy day, so don't expect it to work well. But what do you know? Uh, double bottom around the daily zone and then pushed up, uh, got through the the one hour zone, went straight to the next daily zone, got rejected, fell down to the zone, and then probably ping ponged, yep, just like NQ. So it respected those levels. And then we'll go back to Tuesday, and then we'll just do Monday so we can see. So on Tuesday, uh, pre market, we were at this supply level, flirting with it, bearish engulfing below. This is actually a lower high bearish engulfing. So you can take a short on this candle close. Why? Because we were flirting with this zone, poked above it pre market, but then Market open, there were, this is one bearish engulfing, two bearish engulfing, lower high bearish engulfing, where does it go? Next zone. Breaks through that zone and goes straight to the next zone, breaks through that zone, stops halfway through the zone, and then retraces, tries to use this as resistance, but breaks through. Once it breaks through, you wanna wait for a pullback to see if it's gonna stay. Pulls back and you need another engulfing. So as an example, on this, this short one, right? Let's say it broke through and then it came back and you wanted to see if there's going to be resistance. You wouldn't short here because this is an engulfing off of the level, right? Then it poked through and you said, oh, I guess that level is not really working probably. It uh, pokes through, but you don't want to take it on the first break. We wanted to test it and then have an engulfing again. And if this one did that, you could take that long to the next level, right? Works perfectly. Uh, last day, we'll take a look at Monday. So on Monday, you can see pre-market here. Uh, pre-market floated up to one level, sold off on the market open, tested the next level. Basically, when it tests the level, you want to look for a higher low bullish engulfing. What does that do? Higher low uh, you, bullish engulfing. This is the break of, off the bottom. It goes straight to the next zone. That was your long. I actually took this long. Oh yeah, I, I was in this long. After dropping all this gold, hit that thumbs up button if you found this valuable. Uh, it lets me know you do appreciate these videos and that I can make more videos just like this. So hit that thumbs up button if you wanna see more videos like this as well and let me know in the comments down below what you loved most about this video. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you use supply and demand zones in your day trading and I'll see you in the next video.